Hi guys, let's do keys in rooms. There are n rooms labeled from 0 to n minus 1, and all the rooms are locked except for room 0. Your goal is to visit all the rooms. However, you cannot enter a locked room without having its key. When you visit a room, you may find a set of distinct keys in it. Each key has a number on it denoting which room it unlocks, and you can take all of them with you to unlock the other rooms. Given an array rooms, where rooms at i is the set of keys that you can obtain if you visited room i, they want us to return true if you can visit all the rooms or false otherwise. So if we look at the examples, in example one, we're given rooms equals this array, and we would output true because um, basically we start from room zero because room zero does not have, like it's the only one that's not locked, so we start from there. Um, so at index zero of this outer array, then we have this inner array, which stores the key to room one. So then we can visit index one, which is two, or which is this one, um, which stores the key for room two. And then so we can unlock room two, which is at index two. And then at index two, we get the key for room three. And then if we visit index three, which is room three, then there that's it. So we've visited every index and um, then we can return true because we were able to visit every room. In example two, we would output false because given this set of rooms, we cannot enter room two since the only key to that unlocks it is in this room because this is index zero, one, and two. So like from, we'd start at zero and then we could visit um, rooms one and three. So this is room one, this is room three. Well, room three only has a key to zero, which we already visited, so we don't really care about that. Room one, we can visit zero, which we already did. We can visit room one, which is the current room, so that's kind of useless. And we can visit room three, which is this one, um, which we've, which um, only brings us back to zero, and so we're just stuck, um, and we cannot get to room two, because the room for room, the key for room two is stuck in here, and we have no other key to it, so we would return false. So. Basically, for this one, we can um, start at room zero of whatever we're at. Like, I already copied and pasted example two here because it's a little bit more interesting, I guess. Um, but we can put both of them. So, that would be... Oops, why did I do that? Okay, so these would be all of our rooms. So like if we start at room zero, then we can do a DFS on everything that's like in this first array. So like, cause like if we use this one, there's two different keys, right? So we can do a DFS basically and go to, or you could do a BFS, either one, um, but we can go to room one and then we would do a DFS on these and then we would go to room three and then we, um, here is zero. So then that is a dead end because I'm not a dead end, but like a endless loop because then we get back to zero. So then we backtrack and then we can do zero and then we already saw zero. So we don't go there again. And then we can do one, but we're already in one. So then we would exit that. And then here we have three. So we'd go to three and basically like that would be our DFS. And then we, yeah. Um, and so, but we need to keep track of what rooms we've visited already so that we don't have an endless loop and revisit the same rooms over and over again, right? Where like, let's say we go to three and then we go to zero and then we go to three and then we go to zero and like it's just back and forth. We don't want that. So we need somehow to keep track of where we've already been. And I would suggest using a Boolean array in this case, because since the rooms are labeled by indices here, like every in inner array is a um is a room then we can create a boolean array of the same size like the same number of rooms that we have here and just mark each room as true or false true for already visited and false for we have not visited and so that way at the end if we have visited all of the rooms then our boolean array will only contain true in the entire array because that means we would have visited everything. So if there's any false in that array, then we would return false in here, in the whole thing. So we can start by initializing that Boolean array. 
and it's going to be the same size as rooms. And then we will do a DFS starting from room zero. So we'll pass in zero. We'll pass in our rooms uh, array list and we'll pass in visited. And that's because, so in each DFS, because for like, so we'll start in room zero, right? And then for every room in room zero, we need to visit all of the, like I go as, as deep as we can into all the rooms that are, that we have the keys for in here. Um, but like basically our DFS is going to call itself for each room that's in here right? and then all of these rooms that are in here and here and so on. So we need to keep like we, we're going to need to continue to reference the rooms to be able to access the keys in the rooms. And for visited, we're going to need to modify that as we visit new rooms. So we're going to have to pass that in as well. So um basically yeah so let's just uh, we'll come back to this we'll do our dfs first and then we'll come back so for dfs we're going to do private void dfs we're going to pass in our um our room we're going to pass in our list of list of integers which is all of our rooms and our boolean array visited okay and then here so for our base case if we've already visited a certain room, then we don't need to revisit it. So we can just exit. So if visited at room is true, then return. We don't need to do anything. And then otherwise we have not already visited this room. So we'll mark it as visited because we're there now. So visited at room is true. And we will do a DFS on all of the rooms that are in, or like all of the keys that are in this room. So for each key in rooms.get room, because that will be whatever key we're at, like let's say here, right? Then we're going, oopsie, we're going to do a DFS on this new room that we just gained access to. So key rooms and visited. Okay, and that should be it for our DFS. Pretty straightforward. So once we've done a DFS on everything here, then our visited array should, well, we'll start it out like, like let's say we have, well, I guess both of these have um, length of four, so we can say that, right, to start out. One, two, oopsie, two, three. Okay, so this is like how we start out. And then as we visit each room, then this should all turn into true. So we'll wanna, but like if there's one room that we haven't visited, so like for example, let's say we're doing this example, so everything would be true except for room two, like that then in that case, like we're gonna want to loop through our visited array and check if we have any false values. And if we have any false values in here, we'll return false. Otherwise, if we were able to get through the entire array with only true values, then we'll return true at the end. So we'll just do a loop. So for Boolean, I'll just say V um, and we're gonna traverse visited. So um, if, v is false return false okay and then otherwise if we were able to loop through the whole thing then we can return true so let's check that okay i don't know why that was so slow today maybe it's my connection but um basically then our time complexity here is going to be O of N plus M, um, where N is the number of rooms and, oops, and M is the number of keys. Okay, and this is because, so if we think about how our algorithm is working here, we basically, like we have this so, uh, sort of like 2D array list, right? And so in this array list, like we have to 
traverse through every single in inner array, which is the number of rooms. And then for every room, we need to also visit every single key that's in this room. But we don't need to like really revisit ones that we've already seen before. So, um, and we can see that in our um, DFS, right? Because we are, we have this for loop here, which is visiting every single key that's in the room. And then we call itself for every room, basically. Like for every key that's in each room, right? So, um, and then this one is just O of N, like this loop here, because we only, like this is the same size as um, rooms, like which is just N, because it's the same number of, like it's the number of rooms that is the size of visited. But then that still gets like taken over by this. So then our space is just O of N because, so we, we have this visited, which is O of N and um, that, that's like really our only data structure that we have created here, but we also have the call stack in the, um, in the DFS, but worst case, that's still just O of N because like if every room is just like, like, um, this one, it's like creating a chain, right? Where it's just like zero goes to one, which goes to two, which goes to three. And then that's it or something like where it's a, cha a chain like this, then that's the, our, our call stack will have O of N at one time before it can like backtrack everything at once at the very end. You know what I mean? So yeah, but thank you guys for watching. Um, if you found this helpful, please like, and subscribe. Bye.